artists, influencers, and the NBA are making millions with non-fungible tokens. In the first 10 minutes of bidding, we had more than 100 bids from 21 uh, bidders, and we were at a million dollars. These little bits of digital media could be anything. It's uploaded onto a blockchain platform, establishing ownership, price, and preventing replication. From there, it's permanently on the blockchain with unique digital properties. An NFT can be sold and collected. The NBA has just launched a site for collectors to buy and trade NFTs, kind of like trading cards. Recently, a 10-second video was auctioned for $6.6 .6 million. Even the New York-based Christie's has a non-fungible token on the auction block. It's set to be the first NFT sold by a major auction house. Our tech contributor, Takara Small, is here to help us understand all of this. Takara, I got to admit, I just read all that and I'm still a little bit lost. <laughs> so help us understand. We know that this is like, it's a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, but instead of money, it's attached to an item. So how do you buy one and what do you get? Yes. So you can buy an NFT, which is essentially like a digital asset or digital content um, online at many marketplaces online right now. I think one of the really great things about it, as you mentioned, is it can be anything from, you know, sporting cards to sneakers to digital representations of a rose, which just sold for $20,000 online. Um, and because it's using something called blockchain, it, you can prove that it's authentic. So you can see who made it when they made it, all the information about the artist, and you cannot manipulate that data. Hmm. So it really helps prove what's authentic online and you feel safe purchasing it. Okay, uh, one example, Kings of Leon became the first musicians to sell their album as an NFT. How, how exactly does that work? Yes, so it's really interesting artists who are going down this road. So pretty much you can sell, what they're doing is they're gonna sell um, exclusive audio content online. One of the platforms one of is called um, OpenSea, which you can use. And what you'll do is you'll pay for it using cryptocurrency. Um, you can't use actual cash at this point, but you, for instance, Ethereum or Bitcoin, you can purchase it and it'll live on your computer. And then after that, if you want, you can sell it again or you can keep it forever and listen to it and enjoy all the perks that go along with that very exclusive piece of digital content. Right. So I read kind of a, a an example was like, it's like owning, you know, a Monet versus owning like a print of a Monet, right? Uh, this idea that you kind of own this digital piece of art and it's not just music, it could be digital artwork and people are mm -hmm. making millions off of, of selling them. Um, mm -hmm. Why are they worth so much? I think uh, what we're seeing is a case of FOMO, to be honest, um, because um, it's not like NFTs are new. They've been around since at least 2015. So I think you're seeing people jump on this craze, especially because I think more people are adopting cryptocurrency and the fact that it's new and you see all of these huge major, major players in the business who are adopting it and selling digital assets at the t same time make it very enticing. Do I think it will last very long? I'm not so sure. But right now, um, you know, I think that's why we're seeing everyone talking about it and selling whatever they can through it. Right. So you just touched on what, what I was going to ask. What are the risks associated with getting into this trend? Yes. So one of the risks, I would say, is that people will purchase perhaps a piece of art online um, or a piece of a, a digital piece of digital content, and they may assume that it will go up in value. And that's the same thing we've seen with Bitcoin. It's volatile, so there's no guarantee that if you buy it today, it will be worth more tomorrow. Um, and then, of course, some of the other risks I would say are environmental. I'm sure people, when they're purchasing digital assets, they don't think about the environmental cost, but it takes a lot of energy, and there's a huge carbon footprint to create, sell, and maintain these types of digital assets. So those are the risks involved environmentally and personally and financially for individuals. Just really quickly before we run out of time, where do you see this going in the future? Do you see this being just a fad? It could be. I mean, everyone's saying this is the future, but they said that about Bitcoin and I can't go to the grocery store today and purchase food with it. Um, I think we'll still see it in the long term, but whether we'll, we'll see mass adoption will really depend on how easy it is for people to buy and sell online. All right. Spend wisely, folks. Takara Small is a technology journalist in Toronto and regular contributor here on Canada Tonight. Good to see you. Have a good weekend. Thanks.